Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the Hero Select. I'm Jimmy Jim Basco. And I'm Judy Jetset. And the Hero Select is basically where we're going to be talking about awesome players doing awesome things in the world of esports. And this week's awesome player is High. He's on Golden Guardians right now. Not too good of a team in terms of the numbers, but they've got, had an upswing lately, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. They beat Echo Fox, which is the number one seeded team in the league right now. They had a really close match against C9, who, I mean, even though their numbers aren't that good, they're still a powerhouse in the, in the league, right? And I think all of it can be attributed to High. Most of it. That's a lot. That's a lot, putting on one guy's shoulder. I mean, the, the team itself is not like a team of stars, really. Mm -hmm. High has this tendency of taking these teams that are on the brink of failure and really just pulling them together, which is an indicator of just how incredible and just influential this player is. So let me bring it back, because High has a really storied history, okay? He started way way back in season three i want to say is when he first made an appearance on quantic technically mm. they didn't qualify in the spring split but they made it into the summer split after jack bought the entire team and placed them under the c9 banner good old jack that was the first instance of c9 and they actually like destroyed the league they came out swinging they were so strong and innovative and i would say a lot of it had to do with high's interesting shot calling he's not only um not only unique in terms of his strategies, he picks some kind of off the wall things sometimes, like mm -hmm. even in the most recent Golden Guardians game, he, uh, or sorry, forgive me, the C9 game, he was playing Veigar. Mm -hmm. That's not a champion you see, or Veigar. Don't come for me in the <laughs> comments, okay? Veigar is how I'll call him from now on. I'm Team Veigar, just by the way. <laughs> anyway, so he was playing Veigar, and he was just doing a phenomenal job rotating, which is, I mean, Veigar is, such an immobile champion Stubby that like legs. right his yeah. tiny little legs how is he going everywhere but somehow high continues to have exceptionally high kill participation rates even though he's actually in the bottom 10 rankings of kda he actually has the almost what among the 10 lowest kdas in the game so he's not really getting kills He's dying a lot. I think yeah. he has the most deaths in the league, if not one of the most. Jeez. And But he's everywhere. He's doing things. He's getting stuff done, and he's there with his team. He, um, going back to his history, right? He was uh, on C9. They had an amazing run. Um, they, I, I think at the time, they were going to participate in All Stars. Mm -hmm. So Cloud9, as a team, was collectively going to participate for, to represent North America. And Hi... Hai's lung collapsed. So naturally, he couldn't play. Yeah. And when he came back, he just wasn't the same. You know, it, after that break, I think, after that, you know, kind of life-threatening event, obviously that changes people. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, Hai could never really get back onto that upswing. That's so disheartening. Almost. It's, it's kind of tragic because mm -hmm. eventually he stepped back Right, he retired. He became, yeah. I think, chief gaming officer, and like, that was right when Cloud9 was starting to expand, buy players in other esports, and become known as more of an esports brand instead of a League of Legends brand. Right. Um, they had a really a good uh, CS:GO team, I think. They had they they sponsor mm -hmm. some pretty notable fighting game players, mm -hmm. including C9 Mango. Shout out to Mango, <laughs> Team Beer all day. But um, he, I think. Um, Hai always had this competitive drive, you right. know what I mean? And so even though he was taking a back seat, when, as soon as that happened, Cloud9 just took a nosedive. They went, I want to say, three and seven before Hai stepped right back in, was like, you know what? I can't see my team go down yeah. like this. I'm going in. He goes in and they win like so many games in a row it's just like it's just it's an anime. He just like he he comes in and he's like you you hear him doing these illustrious kind of morale boosting talks in the beginning Friends, of the game. Friends, Romans, countrymen. Legit. He like, <laughs> but I mean, you yeah. you joke, but he's actually like, guys, we just gotta keep our heads in the game. We take it one game at a time, like storybook stuff. Like mm. this is pep talk. You know, this is um, what's that? What's that uh, movie with the with the hockey team? The Mighty Ducks. This is some Mighty Ducks stuff where he's like rallying everybody together and he's like, look, we we can do this. We take it one step at a time. Mm -hmm. It's you and me, guys. We're just practice what, you know, do what we practiced and we can make it. 
it's it's such motivating stuff that like I was motivated to play better in my solo queue games after listening to High's comms. It's amazing. Mm. So all of that to say he brought them up to have a shot at playoffs from a three and seven uh, ratio, a three and seven win loss. He, he takes them through the gauntlet where they have to play every team above them in the standings in order to make it, and they make it. Now, we don't have to talk about how they did at Worlds that year because that that Different goes against story. the narrative, okay? Yeah. Riot, the Riot messed up the script on that one. But the fact of the matter is, High has proven time and time again that he's got the intangibles. He's got mm -hmm. the game sense. He's got the motivating factor that rallies the players together to execute on strategies that are really innovative for our meta throughout the years, you know? Mm -hmm. Metas has changed in League for a long time, you know, some cre crazy drastic swings that have sometimes isolated him and made him incapable of playing, right? So assassins are not really as much of a thing anymore. That was kind of mostly his bread and butter. Yeah. Um, probably because it masked his lack of mechanical prowess. Oh, just, just press a couple that. buttons, get a kill, die, and then be emotional you know, support? Why? I'm not saying that assassins are easier to play, mm -hmm. but you can press two buttons to kill somebody versus pressing more <laughs> than two buttons. You know, I would take the two buttons. But um, that being said, Hi, proven time and time again. After C9, he went on to FlyQuest. Mm -hmm. After FlyQuest, he went on to Golden Guardians. Right. These are both still brands in the league. Golden Guardians was at the face of defeat, mm -hmm. and then Hi managed to buckle them up and play and and play to their strengths and play to their victories. So I think another thing worth mentioning about Hi is that he has a lasting effect on his players, right? So I mentioned before how he can rally people, how he can bring people together and, and pace them towards a specific objective. Right. Even Medios, who was his jungler on Cloud9 at the mm -hmm. time, has then left the, the, the scene, he didn't play for a while, came back, is now in 100 Thieves, and is on record saying that Aframu has lends that sort of same quality as a leader. Hmm. He he appreciates being led, mm -hmm. being encouraged, being focused and guided in his games. And that I think is something that he can attribute to High. So with all of that, I kind of want to take bring it to you because I don't know if it's because Overwatch is a different game or if if maybe that that kind of what is there anyone stand out because I don't I don't know the game I don't know the players that <laughs> way. Do you know of anybody who kind of has that standout quality in the same yeah, way? Yeah, I does? would say you know it's not as uh, cut and clean as it is with high because with high like with League of Legends you know you mentioned earlier that you know at certain times in the game there's certain objectives that you have to get and you can get very caught up in so many other parts of the game so that you need those shot colors to really okay we need to go be doing baron we need to go be doing dragon this mm -hmm. is our time exactly. start positioning yourself start putting warriors in top jungle because whatever whatever in overwatch it's more of map movement and these map movements happen instantaneously so when you have shot colors and you have emotional support people their role is more like 24 7. it's more like of constant mental fortitude and vigilance and so someone that comes to mind definitely is mickey from the mm. dallas fuel and I, he's an exceptionally strong D.Va player. He's a very good tank, but more than anything, I think he's a glue that keeps the Dallas Fuel together. Because mm. if you look at their team, their personalities like XQC, you have uh, Seagull, you have AKM, you have a lot of people who are very, very individually mechanically skilled, but they're prone to tilt, namely XQC. And yeah. you can't have people tilting on your team. It's just not good for morale. And so, you know, in situations like that, you need someone to be like, hey guys, let's just refocus. Just oh, yeah. take your time. In in league, I want to say they do have a little more, bit more of like those pauses, so they can like recollect their thoughts and like go into the next fight. You know, there's a little more time between fights, so you know, maybe yes or no. I definitely think that there are mm -hmm. a lot of team fights in Overwatch, but I feel like League has this. I, I don't know if it's the same way as as it is with Overwatch because uh, one mistake can lead to a snowball effect. Oh yeah, <laughs> and oh, yeah. I don't know if that's is that the same in Overwatch? Yeah, and I, I, honestly, I would argue that. Well, it's very map dependent, obviously, but like say two CP, right? Vol Sky, you make mm. one mistake on that first point, you're losing that first point, and you're gonna guarantee lose like a tick or two of your second point. Mm. It's just snowball, snowballing basically is not good. And in League of Legends, like being that 40 minute game, I feel like those snowballs have such wide impacts. Uh, yeah, it's just such a wider. It, it, so 
I think the difference is items, right? So the, the, the scaling effect of League of Legends is what makes the snowball so much harder because one mistake can lead to a level advantage, can mm -hmm. lead to an item advantage, can lead to you having summoners for mm -hmm. a team fight when your opponent doesn't. And all of those things are things that your shot caller needs to be cognizant of, right? right. So you'll find High regularly communicating with his teammates. He'll have, there'll be a moment where he'll be like, hey, who's with me? Who's got summoners? Do you have anything? Does this guy have his flash? No, I'm going in. Yeah. And there was a moment in particular where he was, um, where, where he, they were, he was playing Alistar. He was support, not even his main <laughs> role. He was just doing anything to keep this team together, right? And he was playing support outside of the enemy base and he was hovering around and he was like, hey, does does Gangplank have flash, or does does this champion have flash? Right. Does, does Gangplank have flash? Someone said, I, I don't think so. No, he no, doesn't. No, he, he doesn't. doesn't. Okay, kill Gangplank. Boom. Still flash, pulverized. Boom. Killed that guy Goodbye. instantly. Nobody. He he Six literally needed to say the one word. Mm -hmm. He asked that question, and immediately, wall, not only did he execute, ball. but his team was there for him. Right. That's a synergy that is desirable that is not that's rare okay yeah there are so many other situations where like one guy will hesitate another guy doesn't know what to do because see that's something that I think is a little I almost I almost don't like high because he can accomplish this and he can accomplish this because his teammates are so mechanically gifted mm -hmm. that they become like robots. Yeah, they just need to be told where to go, what to do, how to do it. Okay, got it. Right, and so Hai is just so good at just knowing everything and, and kind of dictating the flow of a fight that he can actually micromanage people to the point of telling them when to press their buttons. I've heard him in team fights say, Balls, press your W. Balls, don't die. Balls, you need to walk back right now. Uh, can you shield me? Yeah, now use your Q. And it's just like, why you can just play the game with you right, and like five computers? Your yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And w at what point is it skill, right? Yeah. At what point is Hai just literally single-handedly playing the game with other shit? <laughs> with other, yeah. yeah through well, other bodies. Yeah, through other, through <laughs> pup, like he's just the pup, a puppeteer just mm -hmm. stringing everyone along. Well, when you mention Hai and you mention his ability to really dictate the game's pace to his teammates to really control it, the person that comes to mind, honestly, in the sense of Overwatch League is Ryu Jong. And mm. I think the most pertinent example of that is when they got slapped by the LA Valiant. Because without him in the game, they really looked like a group of headless chickens. Mm. And, you know, you mentioned that High is kind of overbearing in the sense that his shot calling is, is like, is very particular. It's very micromanaging. But I think Ryu Jong's success is also in that as well, because his team kind of relies on him to dictate, okay, Hold your ults, this is gonna be a dry push. We're just gonna go in and take a lot of damage, let them use our ults, right. and see what happens. But even in that sense, like, still League of Legends matches are 40 minutes long. You know, the mental fortitude you required. You saying that. They were 40 minutes long when you were playing like three they're, years uh, ago. Sorry, okay. they're like 35 minutes long, my bad. <laughs> like, okay, you got it. 30 minutes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 25 to 30 minutes. But like, I definitely, I have to, I commend them for that because the mental fortitude required to pull your team especially with the record that the team's high has been on recently like yeah. the ability to pull your team forward is something that needs to be recognized and it's ridiculous i find that interesting that because uh, ryu jae is a support right yeah yeah so that's I, I find it very interesting that he um it, it almost takes that kind of back seat mm -hmm. sort of to maybe not as mechanically intense a player so like what support champions does he play usually so that uh, he, heroes yeah he's he's plays very mechanically like he plays anna oh, like most okay. specifically and i think the reason it works for him is because he's able like while it is mechanically intense and he's doing a lot he is able to take that back seat in the back of his team and literally just watch things happen right. as a sniper yeah. you've got a wide scope exactly. of the game <laughs> right you like that one um, so, I think High, at this point, right, because I've already said numerous times, mechanically gifted, he is not. And I don't think even he would say so mm -hmm. if you asked him. Right. But I think right now, on the one hand, he's kind of riding on his laurels. His history and his resume is just so long and extended that, it, you know, you can't, you can't deny High's positive impact like on the he's, game. Yeah, he's literally been around since the beginning of the entire thing. Right, but it almost begets itself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because High can say, I'm High. Mm -hmm. I'm guaranteed to do to do a good thing for your team. And everyone just believes him. Do you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. And that almost, that snowballs the effect right. of him doing good things for his team. Right. 
right? If you can, if you buckle down and put your faith in high, mm -hmm. high's gonna do good for you. And that's why I think he's worth mentioning right now. Thank you so much for watching. Let us know in the comments if you're the shot caller on your team or if you even like having a shot caller. And let us know if there's anyone you want us to cover in future episodes. Also, subscribe if you haven't already and hit that bell icon to become part of our notification squad today. We upload a couple times per week. You guys will figure it out as the channel continues to post and stuff. On Leaderboard Esports, I'm Jimmy Jimbasco. And I'm Judy Jetset. Keep it tuned until next time.